I'm Dr. Chip Levee, Professor of Medicine and Medical Director of Cardiac Rehabilitation and Preventive Cardiology at the John Oshner Heart and Vascular Institute, Oshner Clinical School, the University of Queensland School of Medicine in New Orleans, Louisiana, and I'm here to discuss our paper entitled Association of Coffee Consumption with All-Cause and Cardiovascular Mortality, which is published online this week in August 2013, ahead of print in the Mayo Clinic Proceedings and will appear in an upcoming issue of the journal. I'd first like to acknowledge and congratulate the excellent efforts of my two main co-authors, Dr. Jin Sui Liu and Dr. Shimei Sui, as well as the senior author, Stephen Blair, and my other two co-authors, James A. Bay and Conrad Ernest, for their excellent efforts on this important manuscript. Coffee is second only to water in the leading beverage consumed in the United States and most of the world. And recent statistics indicate that coffee consumption has been increasing in the United States in the last two decades. And currently, it's estimated that Americans consume nearly 400 million cups of coffee each day. There continues to be considerable debate about the health effects of caffeine and coffee specifically, with some reports suggesting toxicity, many neutral effects, and some even suggesting some beneficial effects. In fact, Dr. James O'Keefe and I have a major review published this month online in the Journal of American College of Cardiology reviewing these data, mostly suggesting neutral effects of low to modest doses of coffee with even some benefits on cardiovascular health and particularly against neurodegenerative diseases. Well, in the current paper in the Mayo Clinic Proceedings, my co-authors and I assessed coffee consumption and all-cause and cardiovascular mortality in 45,000 subjects from the Aerobic Center Longitudinal Study. Over 25% were women who were followed on average for 17 years. This represents nearly 700,000 person years of follow-up, during which time there were 2,512 deaths, 32% from cardiovascular causes. And we assessed the impact of coffee consumption along with cardiovascular risk factors, including cardiorespiratory fitness, and its impact on total and cardiovascular mortality. During this 17-year follow-up, we found that high doses of coffee, particularly above 28 cups per week, were associated with a 21% increased mortality risk with no significant effect on cardiovascular mortality at any of the doses. When we delved into this data in more detail, we found that the high amounts of coffee were particularly toxic to young people under age 55, where the younger men had a trend toward higher mortality even at the lower doses, but this became significant at about 28 cups per week, where there was a 56 percent in independent increase in total mortality, and the younger women had a greater than twofold increased mortality risk. The older people over age 55 were not affected by these high amounts of coffee or really any doses of coffee for total mortality. And as I mentioned, none of the doses of coffee in either men or women or younger or older had any significant effects on cardiovascular mortality. Now the mechanisms for these associations are speculative at best. And I mentioned earlier that Dr. James O'Keefe and I and our other co-authors have a major review published this month in the leading cardiovascular journal, Jack which mostly showed the safety of low to modest doses of coffee consumption, no adverse effects on blood pressure, coronary heart disease, heart failure, or arrhythmias. In fact, some data suggesting benefits on arrhythmias. And recent data suggesting that coffee consumption may be protective against stroke and other CNS diseases like Alzheimer's dementia, depression, Parkinson's disease, some benefits even on preventing asthma. So low doses of coffee, particularly one to two cups per day and maybe even two to three cups per day, seem to be safe with possibly some beneficial effects. Now, at first glance, you might say that this review in Jack and this major paper in the Mayo Clinic Proceedings may tend to contradict each other. But really, even though our current paper in the Proceedings did not show any benefits of low doses of coffee, we still showed safety of low doses of coffee, in fact, up to about 28 cups per week. And only at 28 cups per week or more was there a signal 
for increased total mortality, particularly in the younger patients under age 55. Now, several limitations of the present study should be emphasized. First, our aerobic center longitudinal study is a unique population, pretty healthy, uh, mostly Caucasians, higher socioeconomic class, more education. So these data may not be applicable to all populations. Second, we only assessed by questionnaire the number of cups of coffee per week, so an estimate of coffee consumption at one point in time, and we did not precisely measure coffee consumption or assess changes in coffee consumption over time with cardiovascular total mortality. Now, it should be emphasized, though, that when these data were being collected uh, 25 and 30 years ago, a cup of coffee was the standard eight-ounce cup of coffee that contained six to eight ounces. And if we did this study today, it would be important to do it in ounces because now you have regular cups of coffee, grande cups, super grande cups. Some cups of coffee now uh, contain 20 ounces or more of coffee. This would be equal to, to two and a half uh, cups of coffee by a standard uh, definition. So in conclusion, the constellation of data along with our current paper in the proceedings suggests that there's safety in low to moderate doses of coffee, certainly one to two cups per day and probably even two to three cups per day. But there's reason for caution with high doses of coffee. For example, four cups per day on average or higher because at least in our study there appears to be a signal of increased total mortality at least in the younger patients under age 55 years of age with this high amount of coffee consumption. As Mark Twain said long ago, all things in moderation, including moderation. And as Hippocrates said centuries ago, if we could give the proper nutrition and exercise to each individual, not too little and not too much, we may have found the safest way to health. These classic quotations apply to many things in life, certainly to exercise, to alcohol, and as our current study suggests in this issue of Mayo Clinic Proceedings, probably applies to coffee consumption as well. Thank you. We hope you found this presentation from the content of Mayo Clinic Proceedings valuable. Our journal's mission is to promote the best interests of patients by advancing the knowledge and professionalism of the physician community. If you are interested in more information about us, our home page is www.mayocliniceproceedings.org. There you will find access information for our social media content, such as additional videos on our YouTube channel or journal updates on Facebook. You can also follow us on Twitter. More information about healthcare at Mayo Clinic is available at www.mayoclinic.com. This video content is copyrighted by Mayo Foundation for Medical Education and Research.